Still wishing that the treaty near Chinks was enforced? Want to go back to the good old days when the East India Company ruled India? Terrified of a Catholic overthrow of your country? Well, it sounds like you're stuck in 1689. If you're stuck in 1689, you're probably a member of the NRA. Hey there, my name's Austin, welcome to Douchebag America. In this series, we're gonna highlight all the douches, petards, a-holes, f-flippers, m-ditties that have made America great. And tonight's first douchebag is the NRA. So the NRA, the National Rifle Association, was founded in 1870, no, no, you know what? No, we gotta go back further. In 1685, James II was crowned King of England. As a practicing Catholic, the ruling class of England were skeptical of his ascendancy, but without a male heir and eager to stabilize the country after the tumultuous 17th century, the Protestants' worries were brushed aside. As Catholics were increasingly promoted to government and military posts, concerns grew until they came to a head when James issued a male heir and baptized him Catholic. This led to an invitation to William of Orange, leader of the Protestant Netherlands, and his wife Mary, James's daughter, to reclaim the throne under Protestant leadership. So what does this guy do with AR-15s? Well, the conditions set by the English aristocracy for William of Orange to ascend the throne included an English Bill of Rights that specifically prohibited Catholics from retaining certain posts but, more importantly, by duty, maintained that Protestants must be armed to prevent future Catholic incursions on English royal power. When this duty, not right, when this duty was transferred to English American colonies, the Protestant criteria was no longer explicitly listed because it was implied. Catholics, Quakers, and other non-mainline Protestant Christian groups were in the minority in most colonies, illegal in others, and in the case of the Quakers, uh, pacifists and didn't own weapons anyway. Just so we have context, the duty was Protestants had to carry these. So the English duty to bear arms still had a very real relevance when transferred across the ocean to the English American colonies, maintaining slave subjugation and Indian wars. Both slavery and Indian wars in the original 13 colonies and their immediate frontiers would last well into the 19th century. That, coupled with James' subsequent rebellions against the crown itself, laid the groundwork for the laws that would later become the afterthought of the Second Amendment. But one point must remain salient in this duty's historical usage and thus its original intent. In every case, whether Protestant against Catholic invasion, white settler against Indian native, slaveholder against uppity Negro, or petulant American against British hegemony, the duty, then right, was maintained as a device to unify the body politic against an outsider, against an other. And as each other non-white Protestant was either defeated or dwindled in relevance or threat to society, this duty, then right, fell to the wayside. Furthermore, those engaged in the defense against the other were typically the extra-urban residents of the ever-expanding frontiers. Contrary to popular culture's depiction, gun ownership in the wild, wild west was not universally observed. In fact, you know the shootout at the OK Corral? Why'd that happen? Because a bunch of guys came into town carrying guns that they were not allowed to have. That's right, the Wild West was so rootin' tootin' shootin' falutin'. No, no, it wasn't. You are not allowed to bring a weapon into civilization because that's idiotic. You have no need for a weapon around fellow citizens with duly elected taxpayer-funded police forces. So the American right that arms shall not be infringed upon has been, from the onset, severely infringed upon. In case you don't know, here is a list of arms that are currently infringed upon. So until the industrialization of the late 19th century, the vast majority of Americans were unschooled and unarmed in firearms. Which brings us to the NRA. Founded in 1871 to teach marksmanship and after analyzing terrible accuracy rates in the Civil War, the NRA's motto used to be firearm safety education, marksmanship training, shooting for recreation. Basically they were a hobbyist organization like model plane builders or a Dungeons and Dragons club. And this philosophy of teaching skills for regular people, boy scouts, amateurs, shootists, hunters, led to the advocacy of sound-minded legislation. Thus, the NRA supported both 1934's National Firearm Act and the Gun Control Act of 1968. It was the support of the latter, which licensed gun dealers, barred felons from ownership, and prohibited machine guns, which led to a schism within the NRA between the, uh, let's say, um, the reasonable people and the fucking nutjobs. 
Needless to say, in 1977, the nut jobs won. They changed the motto to the unilaterally inflexible to keep and bear arms and coupled it with a paranoid delusion of an imagined historical narrative of a heavily armed America that never, ever, ever existed. Thus armed with the mythology couches fact, the NRA turned from target shooting on 22s on the weekend and hunters to rhetoric fiercely defending an individual gun right rather than a skill designed to foster community. Fear mongering makes money though, and white men terrified of black men, home invasion, and other statistical anomalies bolstered the coffers of the firearm industry, creating a self-perpetuating cycle of fear begets profit. Fine, you're an uneducated white man. Make no mistake, guns are a very, very white thing. And you're easily swayed by terror propaganda. So these people exist, fair enough. Go out, buy a shotgun, and rack it to your content whenever you hear a squirrel and mistake it for a gang of Negro rapists. The low velocity and large caliber will give you the stopping power you need to uh, remove the threat of any black teenage girl asking to fix a flat tire at 3 a.m. But no point should you ever think that a 5.56 millimeter gas operated semi-automatic with 30 round magazine is acceptable in any way, shape or form for home defense. Because while it will penetrate your intruder who you shot just because they look different than you, it will also penetrate the wall of your house, the wall of your neighbor's house, the wall of your neighbor's daughter's skull, and definitely your neighbor's daughter's parrot. Now here's where you say, well if guns are outlawed, only outlaws will have guns. You know what? I think that's true. Let's just look at the firearm murders of Dublin, London, Tokyo, Berlin, Rome, Madrid, and New York City. Oh wait, they're either low or non-existent. And in fact, New York, which still has a minuscule amount according to population, typically has murders committed with, that's right, little regulated firearms from the southern states. Which brings us to the final point of the NRA's douchebaggery. Guns are selfish. Their device is designed with explicit purpose to kill and destroy. And sometimes, hey, destruction is fun. Skeet shooting is fun. Target shooting is fun. Loading something up and blowing out an 80s boombox is very, very fun. And that's not a bad argument. Race cars are fun, but you take them out on the weekend. And before you say, well, cars kill, don't, why not ban cars? Well, let's note that also screwdrivers, hammers, time life CDs, electric guitars also kill, but they do other things other than destroy. They have other uses. Guns do not. So yeah, your guns are fun, so keep them out of range and plink away to your heart's content. If the NRA's motto were, dude, guns are cool, I'd buy that, much rather than the erroneous supposition that this is an ancient American right and you can pry it from my meaty sausage-like fingers. Because it's not even an ancient American right. It's not even an American right. So, for rewriting history with incorrect narrative, plying it with fear and paranoia to sway the ignorant, causing undue suffering and pain through prevalent firearms and subsequent murders and suicides, validating terrorists like this guy, and ultimately enriching yourselves and your industry, you, the five million members of the NRA, are American douchebags. Hey, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, share this or subscribe. I don't know where I'm putting the subscribe button, but whatever. Subscribe and uh, comment below on future douchebags that you'd like to see. And if you don't like what I'm doing, I'm looking forward to your misspelled bad grammar, all caps, probably racist comments. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Have a good, uh, I don't know, what, what day is it?